So when I was 23 years old, I'd been building my e-commerce business for a couple of years then. And I started off ramping up my e-commerce business using SEO, which other than paying for some software was essentially free. Uh, spammy link building, all that kind of stuff was a thing back then. Then I switched over to paid advertising, which was awesome because I didn't have to do any of this spammy link building stuff or use these weird pieces of SEO software. Uh, and I could get instant sales for almost any product that I sold in my e-commerce store, which I ramped up to 11,000 products fairly quickly because I found a distributor that would allow me to basically drop ship from 90 different brands of super high quality health supplements. So I had some people from overseas basically add all 11,000 products to my e-commerce store. It got a little chaotic, especially on the ad side, because I didn't have the time to create that many ad campaigns manually. So for my short stint of seven months in an investment banking job, uh, basically the most important thing I got out of there was, number one, I never want to work for anybody. Number two, some really good Excel skills. So I even knew some basic uh, VBA or Visual Basic, I believe what it's called little scripts you can write inside of Excel, at least I did back then. And so I used that to basically create one that would spit out Google AdWords campaigns for me. All 11,000 products I was now advertising on Google AdWords with some basic things like exact match keyword for the product name, uh, maybe exact match for brand name plus product name, product name plus brand name, you know, basically four different keywords for every single product, 11,000 products, which is great. Sales were growing like crazy. I went from nothing to basically $2 million a year the problem was, is I couldn't track anything. It was just such a mess that I was producing all these sales, having to pay all this money for inventory, but then I realized I was accumulating basically $100,000 on my American Express card at 23 years old, and I didn't know how I was going to pay it off. Um, and so I was like, crap, what do I do? I had an employee at the time. I was trying to pay myself. It's basically what I was living off of. And um, what ended up saving me, and I was like, man, I was like, I either got to get a business partner or I got to figure something out here. So I started going to some internet marketing conferences because before then, all I had really done was go to some Google AdWords training and then I was just kind of learning stuff online and learning stuff on the fly on my own. I went to some internet marketing conferences, actually one of the earlier traffic conversion summits when it was in like, you know, a 400 person room inside of a hotel in, in Austin, Texas, and it blew my mind. One of the things that I discovered there was the power of direct response. Meaning you're running an ad, uh, typically a display ad, and you're getting people to buy on the spot. And you can use those skills on landing pages, in emails, and really anywhere you sell people stuff. Even one-to-one -one sales, though it's slightly different there. Uh, but in general, anywhere you're selling anything online, any kind of page, any kind of written thing, you can use these same skills. And so I dug deep at that point. Uh, into old school advertising stuff, uh, such as David Ogilvy. I mean, I feel like if you went through just these four books I'm about to mention, really studied them, really applied them to your business for, say, six months, you would probably know 80% of what most people know about direct response marketing. So number one was David Ogilvy, and the one that stands out to me is Ogilvy on advertising. Number two, Eugene Schwartz, Breakthrough Advertising. This is a classic. Every copywriter loves this book. Um, this is one that I've torn apart multiple times, uh, so that's a great one, Breakthrough Advertising. Another one, John Caples, uh, Tested Advertising Methods. These are old school direct marketing people, by the way. David Ogilvy built a massive agency advertising for big companies, but had a lot of respect for these other direct marketers doing stuff with you know postcards to test different offers. Uh, so he used a lot of that for the biggest businesses in the world. And the other big one, classic Influence by Robert Cialdini. And so I feel like if you just went through those four books, you would know most of what people know about copywriting and all the new people, internet marketing, they're just recycling all the same stuff. Um, so that's was good. And so I learned and went deep into all that stuff, started applying it to my businesses to sell stuff through email, uh, to sell stuff on landing pages, product pages. And that's really what got me out of that $100,000 on the American Express because I started producing cash from my email list. I didn't have to pay for all the sales I was generating at that point. And so... This episode today is about how to get strangers to buy. And I said, if you went through those four resources, that would be good. Another big one that I used for the first 10 or 12 years of doing this stuff was, you can just Google it. It says the 12-step foolproof sales letter template. There's a bunch of different people that have kind of recycled the same thing. I'm not even sure where it originally came from, but I would literally, even after, I, after I'd written copy that it produced over $100 million in sales, I would still pull up 12-step foolproof sales letter template Anytime I had to do a product page, a landing page, even a sales video, sometimes an email, any of those kind of things, 
I would use that resource. The one that I like more now is just simpler, and there's an even simpler one that's only three steps that I'll talk about in a second. But the one that I like now, and I'll go a little bit deeper into this one, is by a guy named Ray Edwards. He spoke at one of our very first events for e-commerce people. Um, but his framework that he has is called Pastor, um, P-A-S-T-O-R. You can look that up online as well. And so here's kind of how this format works, because this is the right level of depth I want to go into right now. So the P stands for problem. This is where a lot of people mess up with trying to get strangers to buy from them, uh, for example, in e-commerce, is they talk all about the things that they care about. The first thing you should think about, whether it's an ad or a landing page, is what is in it for the person that's going to see this thing. That whole thing that people always talk about in marketing, what's in it for me? So one way to think about that is the problem. What problem can you solve for people? Um, if your product helps people lose weight, then it's going to be something weight related. If you help them do fix an automotive issue, it's going to be something automotive related for us selling coffee. A lot of people can't drink coffee anymore that are especially a little bit older because it messes up their stomach. And so we call that out, um, at the very beginning in a lot of different ways. So what is the problem that your product can help people with? Um, so that's the first thing to address, which is the P in the pastor framework. The second is amplify. So a lot of times people will just say, you know, oh, here's your problem, you know, you're overweight, for example. Um, the best way to do this is to amplify that. Don't let them off the hook just yet because they're not really that interested until you've reminded them about all the true things that make this problem really bad. Uh, you're gonna feel embarrassed when you go to your sister's wedding um, because you're not going to look great in your dress. Um, you're, got, you're, you're dreading sort of the summer and beach season. And you're going on a cruise. You're not going to like that. All these different kind of things that if you imagine that if you know your market, the pain points that they have, you're kind of amplifying. And what happens if you don't fix this thing? You'll never find the love of your life. Um, you know, being a little bit extreme here, but this is what you do. I mean, you're looking at what is the problem? What are all the reasons that this is a really bad thing that they should probably think about solving? Now they're like, okay, all right, now I'll pay attention. And then you hit them with a the solution. So we're at PAS, so problem, amplify, then solution. So solution is basically your product. Depending on how long of copy you have, you can go into as little or as much detail. Usually longer copy is better. This is why some of the best performing product pages are typically really long, even in e-commerce. Um, doesn't always perform better, but I would default to that. I feel like there's probably three quarters of the time a longer product page or sales page is going to perform better than a shorter one just because you have more reasons to convince people to buy. And I don't know if you've ever been in the situation, but I have, where I've wanted to buy something, but I almost want them to convince me more to buy it. And so I'll go through as much content as they possibly have to let myself feel like, oh, okay, yeah, this is, this is why I can logically justify this emotional decision of buying, which is why longer copy typically works better. So if you have the room, go into every single feature and benefit of your product. You don't necessarily want to be redundant, saying the same thing multiple times. That gets kind of boring. But if you can go into every detail of your product, why it's better, why it's good, why it's going to help them, that's probably going to help you sell more. So the solution is your product and all the good things, all the specific details and facts that you can go into is going to make your copy way stronger. One of the biggest pieces of feedback that I've almost always given to copywriters that have worked for me is be specific. A lot of times you just want to be lazy and speak in generalities. Um, you know, for example, this product is really good. Okay. Why is it good? Um, well, you know, say if it's a way, say if it's a bottle of supplements, how many capsules are in there? What are the capsules made out of? Where do the ingredients come from? Uh, what does the testing process look like? Uh, any other facts about the quality of the ingredients? Any specific details you can possibly uncover is going to be better. Um, so you want to go into all those kind of things. Then the T gets us to transformation. And so transformation is really proof. And so this is one of the easiest ways to improve copy is to include more social proof. So the more social proof you have, meaning written reviews, star rating reviews, uh, videos, images, anything you can possibly include that's true, that backs up that your product does what you say it does, is going to improve your copy. So that's the transformation part of this is overwhelming proof. I've counted up all the reviews that we have fully displayed, not nothing where you have to kind of click to see more, but fully displayed on our main best performing landing page. It's over 50. And we have different kinds, every kind you can imagine. We have written, we have photos, we have videos, we have star ratings. Um, 
influencer sort of screenshots, social media screenshots, every variation of proof we could come up with. And that's why it converts so well. So pastor, the framework for writing, convincing strangers to buy, problem, amplify, solution, transformation, then we get to offer. So offer is basically, okay, you've told them there's a problem that they have, you've let them know that there's some pain associated with this problem, then you gave them the solution, which is your product, then you said, okay, you know, but you don't have to just trust us, here's a lot of people that kind of prove that this thing does what we say it's gonna do. So people are like, okay, this is kinda cool, maybe this thing can actually solve my problem. How much is it going to cost? And so that's basically what you're answering at this point. So you want to have the best deal possible. And so two elements to do that are other than just having a better product, which is critical, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this episode, uh, is to have a guarantee and scarcity. So your price kind of is what it is. You almost always want some sort of discount on there, which is where the scarcity comes into play. And so on our page, you know, we'll run like a 50% off discount off of our retail price. So that's not a bad model to follow, uh, but have some sort of scarcity. You don't have to say when this deal is going away, but you can sort of indicate that this deal is not gonna be available forever, which for in our case is true. We've tried a lot of times to get rid of this 50% off discount and at some point we probably will, even though it's been a couple years now for us running it, eventually that deal is no longer going to be available. And so we're not lying saying, this is only for today, you're never gonna get this again, because that's not true, but we'll tell people this is available right now and it's not going to last forever, which is 100% true. So having some element of scarcity, if you have limited quantity of stock, I mean, that's great if you can do that. But a lot of times we want something more evergreen. So just some indication of a special deal that's not going to be available forever is a good way to go. Um, and then having a guarantee because you've kind of, okay, people got a problem. You've got the solution. You've proven with social, um, social proof testimonials that your problem actually solves that um, issue. Your product actually solves that problem. Then you've given an offer, they've got some scarcity of like, okay, you gotta kinda make a decision and do this now because this deal isn't available forever. The only really missing piece here is letting them know, what if this doesn't work? Um, that's where the guarantee comes into play. I recommend going as extreme as possible with your guarantee, um, and you can always pull it back later. Um, you, you don't have to necessarily go as crazy as like a double your money back guarantee, but you could do a 30 day guarantee, a 60 day guarantee, and just kind of watch as things go. But if you were to go from zero to like a million units a month, and then all of a sudden something blows up with your guarantee, and then you've got a million people who want their money back because the product's no good, that would be a problem. But in most cases, we're kind of ramping up slowly. And so say if you were to offer a 30 day unconditional, keep the product, we don't, you don't even have to return it guarantee. Um, that's going to be strong. You're going to get more people who take you up on it. Almost always, if you sell a good quality product, you're gonna get more people to buy than you will get to refund because of that or, or want that guarantee. That's almost always the case if you sell a good high quality product. So I would start with a more extreme guarantee, assuming you're scaling sales slowly. Um, then you have 30 days. So if you start seeing after 30 days, this isn't working out, you can always change it and your risk is somewhat minimal. So those are the big parts of the offer. Some sort of price, ideally you throw in some bonuses, uh, but then you especially have scarcity and guarantee. Last part of the framework is response, basically just a call to action. And so you don't want to leave people hanging. You want it to be very clear what you want people to do. I've even seen people's websites today that their website will have a nice product, a nice story. And I'm like, how do I even buy this thing? I don't even understand what to do next. I've seen multiple people and people that do marketing stuff. It's kind of insane. Um, so hopefully that's not your issue. But the last thing is to be explicit. Tell them what to do. Click the add to cart button or here is the add to cart button and check out. I mean, something as simple as that. Just, just literally they've become all convinced at this point. Just make it very easy for them. Ideally give them a button at the bottom is even better. So that's the general how to convince strangers to buy from you. If you cover all of these things and do them well, you're gonna have 80% of what it takes to get somebody to buy from you because we're in kind of the response section of marketing. So we talked a lot about reach. How do you stand out, grab attention? Now that you've grabbed attention, how do you convince that person to buy? This pastor framework is one way to use the basic principles that have been proven and all those sort of old school copy things that I talked about. Now, I mentioned there's a simpler version of this, but I think it takes going more complicated before you go simpler. So I would almost work through it in order. I mean, I would take a look at that 12 step foolproof sales letter template. If you want to look at those books that I mentioned, you can sort of go back to the beginning of the episode, but if nothing else, look at that 12 step foolproof sales letter template. And then once you kind of have an understanding of that, then you can go to the pastor framework. It's a little bit simpler, but the last most simple one is just kind of a structure that I use all the time. I literally use it for these podcast episodes, even though I'm not selling anything is just hook story close. It's same idea. So the hook 
is basically the equivalent of stating the problem, some way to grab attention. Problem is kind of, um, this is getting a little more advanced. Problem is just one way to grab attention. It is important. It's usually the best way. Uh, but hook is basically something to grab attention. Story is kind of all those things that I talked about. You know, problem, amplify, solution, transformation, offer, and then close is the response. You know, what do you want them to do? Or if you're literally selling something, close could include the offer part. So hook, story, close. I use that for almost every video I do. I use it for the podcast as well. And so the hook at the beginning of this episode was the uh, $100,000 American Express story. The story has been, you know, old school copy, the 12 step, the pastor framework, and even this part that I'm on right now. And the close, which I'll get to in a second, is basically just saying, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and so that's another framework is just hook, story, close. But I think you don't want to jump there until you really understand the basics. So if you implement all these things, you are going to convert more people than almost all of your competitors. So hopefully you understand this stuff. We're going to go deep into some other different topics related to this about getting people to buy. But these are the fundamentals that you should have in place one way or another everywhere you're trying to sell people stuff online. So if you want to get all of these episodes 100% for free, please subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform or subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you tomorrow.